this is a good time for me to introduce a word of caution hear me carefully now because we're tapping into a, a supernatural element of our faith and to do that we need to exercise wisdom and maturity let me speak a word of caution as it relates to a specific kind of dream or vision that you may have and and when I say a specific kind of dream or vision that you may have let, let me let, let, let me substantiate that you will remember that I said when you start with dreams and visions God is not going to give you a dream or a vision right away that has to do with the, the, the nation or it has to do with the world or it has to do with the church generally when you start with dreams and visions God is going to start teaching you step by step and he will do that by starting to give you the types of dreams and visions as they relate to you personally right so this dream or this vision that that Peter had and that Cornelius had as well Cornelius had this type of vision as it related to him personally and his social circle around him the Gentile but the way that God gave the dream to Peter is for Peter the dream related more to a people group because it was a people group that Peter would eventually have to accept into the church but when God speaks to you it's going to be a, a, a far more personal at a later stage it may develop into something more but there may be a time when it does develop into the dreams that contain angels now Cornelius and Peter both had dreams that contained angels specifically in that time let me speak a, a, a word of caution as it has to do with dreams that contain angels or supernatural or spiritual beings look carefully how Cornelius described this angel he described the angel in his vision to Peter as being a man who stood before him in bright clothing and that this man appeared to him while he was praying do you notice something common there Peter had his vision or his trance while he was praying Cornelius had his trance while he was praying he had just entered into a state of prayer he wasn't running after a vision but just entered into a state of prayer and he had it but listen how Cornelius describes the angelic being he was a man in bright clothing he was a man in bright clothing now here's where the word of caution comes the Apostle Paul also warned the church in fact the Corinthian church that even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light an angel of brightness and then Paul goes on to say so it's no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness 2 Corinthians chapter 11 14 and 15 so what do we have here we, we, we have uh, a Cornelius's angel as being an angel of light and we also have Satan and his messengers who disguise themselves as angels of light do we throw the baby out with the bathwater? No. But what we need to understand is that not everything that appears to be an angel is an angel. This is why it is so important that every prayer, every vision that we have, that you be in relationship with somebody that is more mature, more mature than you in the Christian faith. Somebody that is advanced and somebody that has walked this road as well somebody that you can take your dream or your vision to speak to you need to get to get with a pastor you need to get with an elder you need to get with a deacon somebody that is trusted and mature in the house these people are given to us these people are given to the church as a great resource for the church that's why God gives us mature believers that we can go and speak to them so while you're busy learning hey don't be prideful don't keep the stuff to yourself go to somebody that can speak into your life and, and give you an explanation perhaps they can say hey that 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 what you saw be very careful because that message that was spoken does not accord with the scriptures uh, with the clear teaching of scripture or they might say wow you've had an amazing encounter with God I want to confirm that that's an encounter with God look at what they said look at how it lines up with scripture but here's one thing I want to say to you don't make a big deal out of the angel don't make a big deal out of the angel an angel is a fellow servant with you 
I don't see, for example, Peter going to Cornelius and saying, Whoa, Cornelius, whoa, my man, you had a vision of an angel. Wow, tell me a little bit more about the angel. Wait, 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 let me get my notepad out. I want to make some notes about this angel. How tall was he? What was he wearing? No. I, I don't even see Peter saying to Cornelius, Whoa, Cornelius, if you had a vision of an angel, you must be on a different level spiritually, man. Wow, you must be some kind of a super Christian. I'll tell you what, Cornelius. We're going to make you an elder in the church. Maybe you can be a pastor of the church. I see no such nonsense transpiring. In fact, after uh, Cornelius had explained to Peter about the angel, I don't see them mentioning the angel again. But what is prominent is the message. What is prominent is the word. The fact that there was a connection that needed to be made. The angelic beings, both in P Peter's dream or vision and in Cornelius as they came to make a connection between the two men Peter and Cornelius and once that was done the emphasis was on the message don't call anything common or unclean that God has made clean and that's what was more important I have seen people going off really over the deep end when it comes to to angels I've I've heard some ridiculous things man I've heard some people that have claim to have had an encounter with an angel and after the angel was taken up to heaven they looked and there was a feather that was left and they picked up this feather and they went and they amazed everybody in their prayer group at the prayer meeting no nonsense man there's a hardy dog up there somewhere there's a bird that's missing his feather give that bird his feather back i've heard some people that have supposedly heard some or other doctrines being expounded and when they come and speak what this supposed angel has told them it doesn't line up with the word of God at all it just does not measure up and and so it's misled that person and it's misled people that have believed that person because they've not exercised godly wisdom they've not been a good steward of the dream or the vision that they've had I've heard some pastors, oh, and it breaks my heart. I've heard some pastors teaching how we can invoke our angel to appear to us. I've, I've heard pastors teaching us once they've uh, appeared to us, how we can then send this angel on an errand for us to accomplish something for us. Listen to me very carefully. This is not Christian. This is not spiritual. This is spiritism. And this is occultism and we must flee this type of thing have nothing to do with that because that is what the Bible speaks of as being the worship of angels we will worship none other than our true living God Jesus Christ and him alone no no that's spiritism and I find that the people that are wrapped up in this the people that promote this type of spiritism and occultic practices are they, 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 they somehow they they try to appear more spiritual. It's almost like when they walk, they try to float into a room. They try to appear to be more spiritual than others, or more enlightened than others, more wise or more supernatural than other people. But you know, the Apostle Paul tells us exactly what the reason is, why they've gotten caught up in such deception. Paul says that they are puffed up without reason by their sensuous mind and not holding fast to the head in Colossians 2 18 and 19 the King James Version uses the expression they are vainly puffed up and the idea is is that they're strutting around like they're supernatural and super spiritual but that being puffed up is without any base basis it's, it's got no basis it's empty and whereas these people portray themselves as being extra spiritual or supernatural actually their mind and their thinking is carnal it's fleshly it's worldly and why well Paul goes on to tell us why they've let go of the head in other words they've let go of Jesus Christ they're no longer under the church they shouldn't be operating in the church because they've let go of Jesus Christ And to this I say to you truly we cannot serve two masters no no we are yet to serve Jesus Christ and him alone does that make sense to you does does that warning just uh, resonate with you I trust that it does I trust that it does because according to Colossians 2 verse 18 we are going to watch out we'll be very careful for the worship of angels no angel will appear to you in a dream or vision and solicit your worship 
or your affection in any way. In fact, an angel would want would, would do away with that. We we read in the Bible where where angels didn't want that. They they said, "No, man, I'm a fellow servant with you. No, worship God and worship Him alone." On the other hand, what we do find is that generally when angels do appear in a dream they'll take on human form there's no wings no harps no air of glory glory gl glorious radiance nothing like that they, they, they'll appear to you just in human form maybe you've had a dream and in your dream there was someone with you and after the dream you know that there was someone with you but you can't quite remember what that person looked like or even what they were wearing far more likely that you've had an encounter with an angel like that and why not the book of Hebrews tells us that that angels are ministering spirits they sent to minister to us and to assist us and, and perhaps you've had a dream like that yes there are even times the Bible teaches that we have may have had an encounter with an angel on this temporal level, uh, level we're not even in a dream not even in a vision but we've had an encounter so the angel has manifested itself on this temporal level and you know how they manifest themselves in such an inconspicuous way that we don't even pick it up see the Bible teaches us that in, in, in the book of Hebrews that there have been times that we've had encounters with angels and, and, it, and, and it exhorts us to be hospitable because why because thereby some have entertained angels unawares they, they've had an encounter with an angel and this angel just appeared to be a normal human being and they've entertained angels unawares no such thing as a big winged glorious creature no it's more likely that if any angel appears to you like that that they've that they're of a demonic form that's how Satan would appear he'd appear to be an angel of light no if an angel does appear to you the emphasis will be more on the message than it is on the angel always be more on the message why because the angel will carry that message with reverence because that message has come from God and that angel himself must also be a good steward of the message that God has given now while Peter was busy wrestling with this remember Peter was busy wrestling so so he didn't have the scriptures that we have he, he didn't understand what this, what this whole message could be and so he was busy wrestling with this and while he was wrestling the voice said to him behold three men are looking for you rise and go down and accompany them without hesitation for I have sent them what is the principle that I get from this well here it is I get from this that when God has given to you a dream or a vision maybe something that has shaken you a bit or rattled you a bit don't worry about being shaken don't worry like I said last time all things work together for good when the vision when the visitors have come or when the vision the interpretation has come don't worry it'll all make sense if it rattles you now so but if you do get a dream or a vision don't try and set set sit down and work out the interpretation of that vision in a vacuum no 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 the, the interpretation is not just going to come by itself as with the other dreams that we've already discussed the interpretation of these types of dreams will uf often unfold to you through a series of events no no one thing it's a series and in Peter's case it was only after he had accompanied his visitors to Cornelius's house in Caesarea that the penny dropped for him and that the meaning of the vision became clear to him he said to the Gentile house that had gathered in Cornelius's home God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean you see Pe Peter then realized it had nothing to do with food it had to do with people your dream or vision is designed to set into motion a series of events that will uniquely position you in such a way that you get to share the gospel of Jesus Christ in other words your dream or vision is designed 
to set into motion a series of events that will set you into motion. It will position you. It will position you to take the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and when you take the gospel, you'll take it with the word of God in your arm. And you'll say, well, I had a vision or I had a dream. But you know, the Lord showed me that this is what the dream means. Here it is. And you speak it from the word of God. And generally, it's going to be so, so pertinent. Not only to one of your hearers but sometimes maybe even to a group of people. It's going to be confirmation. Because just like Peter's vision was confirmation for Peter, for, for Cornelius of a vision that he had, so your vision will work and hand in hand and it will confirm something and some experience or some vision that some other brother or sister in Christ has had. Unfortunately, it's so sad that many of us make the mistake of not recognizing that there are different degrees to the intensity of the visions that we have. See, like I said before, not all of us are going to have uh, fall into trances. Not all of us are going to have the types of experiences that Peter or Paul or even Cornelius may have had. We're not going to have it all right away. S listen, some of us will never ever see an angel on this side of eternity. But it doesn't mean to say that the experiences that we've had, that we must dismiss those experiences. It doesn't mean to say that because the visions that we've had or the dreams that we had are of a lesser degree, that they're of lesser importance. I, I believe that by now you've already had many spiritual dreams or visions. But you know what happens? You wake up in the morning, you jump out of bed, you're such a rush to get, in, get dressed, get in your car and go to work that you don't take time to say, Lord, did you speak to me last night? Do I need to journal this? Do I need to write this down? And so we get up and, and the next thing we know, we're at work, the next thing it's tea time, lunch time, and that dream has just dissipated in the mists of our busyness. No. I, I believe that you've already had many spiritual dreams you just need to recognize them as such remember i spoke to you about 35 different states of consciousness have you ever been in a situation where you've been driving home and the next thing you're pulling into your driveway you don't know how you got there uh, you, do, you don't remember the traffic you don't remember the road rage in incident you don't remember all the the traffic lights but the next thing, you're pulling into your, into your home, and you're pulling into your driveway, and you're home. You think, wow, how did I get here? Th th these are types of conscious or subconscious levels where the Lord may have been speaking to you already. You may come out of an experience not having seen an angel, but you may come out of some sort of a subconscious experience with something that's been deposited on your heart. All of a sudden, you've got an urge to phone somebody. All of a sudden, you've got an urge to go and share a scripture with somebody. Maybe, maybe all of a sudden, the Lord has put on your heart a need for somebody. You come out of an experience like that, and, and all of a sudden, you've become sensitive to a need that somebody may have. They, they've maybe appeared to you like everything's all right in the world, everything's going just right, but, but, but somehow, the Lord has made you sensitive that their heart is breaking, or they may have some sort of a financial need. And the Lord now puts on your heart, hey, God bless that person. You've had a spiritual encounter. As you become more developed in not dismissing them so readily, but paying attention to what it is that the Spirit is speaking to you, God is going to start increasing your, your capacity. He will start increasing the degree of the dreams that you start having. But the dreams that God is going to give you are going to be those types of dreams that make you a better steward of the basic, plain, spiritual truths that we read of in the Bible. You're not going to become like some of those flaky people I've mentioned earlier, walking around on this ethereal cloud, trying to pretend to be somebody that you're not. No, you're going to remain a humble servant of Jesus Christ. And, and, and your message will never have changed. Your message will never become about angels or about dreams or visions. Your message will always be about the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. But dreams and visions are only given to you to assist you, to give you understanding, 
or to give you clarity. And they're a wonderful tool and they're a wonderful resource that God has given to His church. I trust that you're going to get excited as you start stirring up this gift that God has given to us because He's going to start speaking to you in this wonderful, beautiful way. Time for me to pray for you now. Let's do that. Let's bow our heads together. Heavenly Father, as we continue in this wonderful series about dreams and visions, I thank you that you're bringing such great clarity to us. I thank you, Lord, for all the people who may be rediscovering this wonderful gift that was given to the church. Some people have had a very empty spiritual life because they've been taught to cut off this wonderful gift. Oh God, would you bring back the richness and the colors to our dreams? Would you bring back the spiritual maturity, Lord God, that these types of dreams and visions will not separate people or isolate people, but that it's going to draw your church together. It's going to encourage them to get in touch with their pastors and their leaders. It's going to encourage them to get in touch with their home group leaders. It's going to encourage them to speak life, to speak joy, to speak encouragement to people, Lord God. For you use dreams to show us on our subconscious and on other conscious levels things that perhaps we're too busy, things that perhaps we're too distracted or too traumatized to receive on our conscious level. Oh God, would you, be, would you make us become the stewards that you require us to be when it comes in stewarding these wonderful dreams and visions that are of you. I want to pray for your special hand of blessing upon my dear friend that is listening now. Encourage them, Lord. Bless them. And I want to pray that even this evening, you would bless them with a dream or a vision that is of you. And that when they wake up in the morning, they'll have a great sense of joy. And they say, wow, thank you, Lord. I see it for what it is. A dream from my God. Now, Lord, would you send me those visitors to show me the interpretation so that I can be a good steward of the dream that you've given me. For I ask all of this, Lord, and that wonderful name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. My friend, may God richly bless you and keep you until we connect again. Bye-bye.